this thing on? Okay. Yeah, so 20 years in Germany, and I still can't get Daddy Das right. And she's doing the presentation in English. Sorry, I forgot. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm going to do this in English. <laughs> So this was actually a comment that was left on a YouTube video from my last slam in Berlin. And when I read that comment, I felt really bad about myself. I felt really, really sad because I tried in my slam to explain what linguistics is. And clearly with this kind of comment, I failed. Because linguists are not people who speak a lot of languages. And there's a lot of jokes about this. Asking a, ling a linguist how many languages she speaks is like asking a theologian, how many religions do you practice? <laughs> or another one, it's like asking a doctor, how many diseases do you have? <laughs> That's not what linguists do. Instead, linguists study language as a system and we describe how language works. And I can explain to you if I will ever learn the daddy das, and I can also explain to you whether it matters. So I'm actually going to play a little bit with gender bending. Um, this is a study that was done by Hanolikova and colleagues. And they used a methodology called um, event-related potential um, methods. So this is where people wear a skull cap and it has nodes on it. And these nodes measure the electrical impulses over the scalp as people do some sort of task, like listening to sentences and that kind of thing. And what they were looking at is they were looking at what happens when people make a grammar error like das Kultur. So this was actually done in Dutch, but I'll read the German sentence because I, I definitely don't speak Dutch. Um, so they did um, sentences like, Ich möchte gerne nach China reisen, weil sich die Kultur dort von unserer unterscheidet. Right? So they had the grammatical sentence, but then they also had an ungrammatical version, like, Ich möchte nach China reisen, weil sich das Kultur dort von unserer unterscheidet. And what they did was they had a native speaker of Dutch read the correct and incorrect sentences, and they also had a native speaker of Turkish read the correct and incorrect Dutch sentences. So what they wanted to see is what happens when foreigners make these kinds of horrible, horrible errors. <laughs> Der, die, das kann das immer noch nicht. Oh, leck, eh. But anyway, so back to the slam. So when you do ERP studies, what you're looking for, especially if you're doing like a, like a grammatical mistake kind of thing, you're looking for a P600 effect. And a P600 effect is an effect that you see about 600 milliseconds after the mistake has been made. And it's a positive value. That's why it's called the P600 effect. And it looks like a wave like this, just the shape. That's all you need to know um, to understand what I'm going to talk about. Just know that little shape there. That's what happens to our brains when we hear something like das Kultur and our brains notice it. So let's look at the data. And this is the data first for the native speaker of Dutch. So the Dutch speaker read the grammatical sentences, but the Dutch speaker also read the ungrammatical sentences in Dutch. And what the researchers found was a P600 effect when the Dutch speaker made a mistake, right? This is exactly what we expect to see. When we have a grammatical error, we have that P600 effect. But this effect was gone in the second half of the experiment, and basically that means that the people who are listening to these sentences, they got used to the error and their brains didn't even register it anymore. Now let's look at what happened with the Turkish speaker. So the Turkish uh, speaker, the Turkish language was chosen because that's the most common immigrant group in the Netherlands. And Turkish also doesn't have articles like de adidas before now. So this is something that um, Turkish speakers have a hard time with um, in Dutch. And this is what happened with the ERPA results. There's no P600 effect at all in the first half of the experiment and in the second half of the experiment. So what that means is when Dutch people were listening to the Turkish speaker, they heard the accent and they knew that it's highly likely that the speaker will make a mistake and their brains didn't even register it at all. And what the researchers said is that even though native speakers can notice mistakes that people make when they're speaking, these are not usually detrimental to understanding the people. So if I say das Kultur to you, you know what I'm talking about. You're not desperately confused because I didn't say die Kultur, right? And they also point out that native speakers are easily able to get used to people who make little grammatical mistakes. And it's also well known that people can deal with different accents and this kind of thing. But my favorite sentence in the study says, this is good news for people who uh, speak a second language because people are often embarrassed for producing such grammatical errors. And I will admit, I'm not embarrassed. 
I moved to this country 20 years ago to study German, but then I left. I was in England for seven years where I did my master's and my PhD and I did some postdoc research. And I came back to Germany in 2009 and I'm just happy that I can basically make myself understood and that I can understand people. So no, I'm not embarrassed at all that I can't do the der, die, das, immer noch nicht. So that's the thing about linguists. We, we can't speak a whole bunch of languages. That's not what we do. We explain how languages work as a system. Maybe we can speak a bunch of languages, maybe we can't. Maybe we are good at it, maybe we're not, because also, we're people. So that's not what linguistics is about. And whenever I meet people, they always ask me, oh, you're a linguist, how many languages do you speak? I was actually asked this already twice this evening. But then sometimes what people also say to me is, oh, you're a linguist, well, I better be careful how I talk. <laughs> But this, again, is not what linguists do. We do not judge you for your grammar. We do not judge you for your accent. We don't judge you for your dialect. Instead, what we can do is we can study it and tell you what's going on and why that's interesting and if it matters or not. And, um, oh, I already forgot what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Okay, but we see like a lot of this kind of stuff in, in popular culture that linguists tell you how you should use language. And there's a great song, and I love this song, but I hate the, the meaning of it. It's by Weird Al Yankovic. I don't know if you know Weird Al Yankovic. Yeah! He's so good. So he has this song called Word Crimes, and I admit I like this song a lot, although it goes against everything I believe in, um, because he sings things like, I hate these word crimes. Well, you should hire some cunning linguist to help you distinguish what is proper English. And that's not at all what linguists do. Linguists are never going to tell you what proper English is. We're not going to tell you what proper German is. We don't do that. So this happens in our popular culture in songs, and it also happens in TV. And I think probably a lot of you know The Big Bang Theory, this television show, right, with all the different nerds. And you have Sheldon, the, the alpha nerd, and he knows everything, and he gives a bunch of language rules in, in, the, in the sitcom. And they're always prescriptive rules. They're always rules about how you should use language. And they're having a conversation with Leonard, the beta nerd, and there's a North Korean visitor to the university, and they're talking to him. And there's this conversation in one of the episodes where Leonard says to the North Korean kid, hey, you speak English really well. And Dennis says, so do you, except for your tendency to end sentences with prepositions. And Leonard says, what are you talking about? Dennis says, that. And Sheldon says, yeah, he's right. So in English, we have this idea that you shouldn't end sentences with prepositions. It's actually a rule that comes from Latin, but I don't know if you know this, but English isn't Latin. And in English, of course, we can end sentences with prepositions. It's not a big deal. But you see this kind of thing in popular culture all the time. And because um, I have a lot of spare time as a docenten on the Universität des Saarlandes, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to analyze this script. So I downloaded the script for this particular episode, and because I have no life, I counted the number of turns everybody took, the number of words everybody said, and how many times they ended a sentence with a preposition. And guess what I found? So Sheldon Cooper speaks the most, he also ends sentences with prepositions the most because it's not a real rule in English. It's not natural, right? It's the kind of thing up with which I would not put. Now, some of you probably didn't understand that, but if I said it's the kind of thing I will not put up with, you understand that just fine because it's completely natural to do this in English because English isn't Latin. Right? But we see this in popular culture a lot, so I wrote a little paper about this, and there's another really nice study that I cited in my paper, and it's about how what linguists decide, or decide, what linguists say about grammatical and ungrammatical English, or German for that matter, right? We don't decide this is a grammatical sentence. Instead, we ask native speakers, do you think this is okay on a scale of one to 10? How do you feel about this? And here's a really nice study that was done by Radford and colleagues. And what they did is they thought, why don't we just ask people what they think? <laughs> and so they asked people, what do you think about, is it nine minutes, is it nine minutes? Hey kid, is it nine minutes? Okay, okay, thanks, gotcha. This is just none of us. So, they ask people about um, sentences like a world uh, which people live in, where the uh, preposition is at the end. Then they had sentences like a world in which people live, which Sheldon Cooper would love. And then because they're good scientists, they completed all the conditions and they had the preposition marked twice. A world in which people live in. And I will admit, I produce sentences like that all the time. And then they had a condition where there was no prepositions, a world which people live. 
and they ask people to press a button if they thought the sentence was okay, and press another button if they thought the sentence is rubbish and not okay. And they looked at how quickly people did this task. Here's what they found. If there was a preposition in the sentence, people loved it, they thought it was great. And their favorite ones was where the preposition was marked twice. Now, of course, logically, oh crap, will you give me 10 seconds? Thank you. I'll make it worth your while. Okay, so people actually prefer to have the preposition twice. So linguists will never tell you what is good English or whatever. We will describe what people think is okay about uh, language. And that's because linguistics is descriptive. We're not going to tell you what to do. So I'll finish here. Linguists, we're not polyglots. We can't speak a million languages. And we do not judge your grammar. And yeah, motherfuckers, 20 years in Germany, and I still will never, ever get the daddy dress right if I spend another 20 years here. Here. Thank you very much. Carry on, Hashtag is speaking. Thank you so much. Du darfst runtergehen von der Bühne und später kannst du noch mal raufgehen auf die Bühne. Das ist doch ein Traum, oder? Also, vielen, vielen Dank an dich. Und jetzt seid ihr dran mit der ersten Gruppenarbeit. Jetzt erkläre ich noch mal kurz, wie das Ganze läuft.